I'm about to take you behind the scenes of a high-end guitar repair shop and let you have a glimpse at a never-before-seen warranty service for this Fender Acoustasonic neck. That really sounds like a video you wouldn't want to miss. The information in this video is highly classified, but as New York City Commissioner for Guitar Affairs, I have full authority to declassify any classified information merely by thinking about it. Now think about that. We're gonna talk about a warranty service on this neck. Warranty services don't always work the way you think. But before we talk about that, there's an old Chinese proverb that says, any fool can criticize and most fools do. Remember that when we talk about something seemingly unrelated in the second part of this video. Welcome back to Guitar Quackery. Now, let's get down to business. The neck came off of a Fender Acoustasonic Strat style guitar. So, it's an Acoustasonic. It's not exactly an acoustic and it's not exactly an electric. It's its own thing. Here's the neck. It's a mahogany neck with a skunk stripe and an ebony fingerboard. I've seen the necks that have uh, glued on fingerboards and skunk stripes and I've always wondered if uh, they installed the truss rod through the back and if the skunk stripe is actually real or if they install it like on most guitars through the top and then cap it with the fingerboard. So I don't know how this neck is made, but some necks do have glued on fingerboards and skunk stripes. In fact, this guitar over here, which is a Squire, is kind of the same way. It has a skunk stripe and a glued on fingerboard. So I don't know how those are made. All right, so now, now let's get into the service part of this video. Uh, as you can see, I removed all the hardware, okay, including the little uh, string tree. And now I need to remove the nut. Now there's nothing wrong with the nut. Uh, I'm going to remove it to make sure it doesn't get damaged during the second part of the warranty service procedure. So I'll be using these uh, flush cutters, which are usually used to cut the fret ends. Um, using those because they are completely flush. Um, so we can just do it this way, wiggle a little bit, and the nut should come out. And there you go. It's already coming out. Now we just remove it, and here it is. So now we can save the nut. Now the neck is completely naked, no hardware, no nut. And now we're ready for the final part of the warranty service procedure. Before we do that, I just want to let you know that there will be some bonus material. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't want to spoil the surprise. I just want to make sure that you know about it so that you watch until the end of this video. Okay, so now let's do this second part of the warranty service procedure. Yeah, man, we're almost done. Oh, just a formality. I do need to take a picture. Yeah, you wanna see the picture? Oh, it's beautiful. This is the picture that I am required to send to the warranty department at Fender. And Fender sent a new neck. This neck must no longer exist, okay? Uh, now, every uh, manufacturer in the world will produce rejects, okay? Now, that's just a normal part of manufacturing. And it all boils down to cost analysis. Is it more cost effective to destroy the part or sometimes the entire instrument or is it more cost effective to pay a high highly skilled technician to repair a faulty part or entire instrument in some cases 
it's simply more cost effective to destroy a part or the instrument. So every single warranty re uh, authorized warranty repair technician in the world has a contract with the manufacturers. And sometimes the decision is made not by the warranty repair technician, but by the manufacturer for the part or the entire instrument to be destroyed. That's just how it is. And the service repair technician must do as instructed. Okay, otherwise it's a breach of contract. Um, now, once upon a time, there was a YouTube video on YouTube, obviously, about um, a major, well-established retailer who uh, apparently smashed up a Gibson Les Paul guitar and threw it into the dumpster. Someone found it and made a video about it. Um, and I always felt that uh, the conclusions were, you know, maybe not accurate. And it, it was not really fair to the retailer that this video was posted with those comments. Well, uh, that's because uh, I don't believe that uh, the person who posted that video, um, you know, is in that business and really understand how things work. Now, I was not involved with any of that business. I just know for a fact that this happens every day. And it is not the retailer, it is not the warranty service provider who decides that something will be destroyed, it is the manufacturer that makes the decision. Uh, so once they send a replacement, they own the old part or the entire instrument, and they can decide what needs to be done, and they will inform the service provider what to do. Simple as that. Again, I really don't know the story of that Gibson Les Paul guitar, but this is something that we need to consider as a possibility. Because I see it all the time and I also do it all the time. All right, so now I did tell you that there was going to be some bonus material. It's going to be a neck autopsy. So far, I haven't even told you what's wrong with the neck, right? Well, I don't really know, which is exactly why we're doing a full guitar neck autopsy. I just know that the truss rod did not work. So the first thing that we want to know is if perhaps the truss rod was maxed out. We can have a, a quick peek here. These are the remaining threads of the truss rod. And we see that the truss rod is, in fact, not maxed out because there are quite a few threads uh, left behind the anchoring point, which is this brass piece. Then we can see here we have a plastic spacer. Uh, I imagine uh, the purpose of this spacer is to reduce the friction between this metal nut and this brass spacer. Uh, this, in fact, is the truss rod nut, which I was unable to turn. So, I, I can't do much here because I don't have all the tools here. Um, we'll take this snake to the shop and we'll put it on the dissecting table. And we'll do a full guitar neck autopsy and find out what was wrong. I was able to draw some conclusions from the dissection. Um, so this is now all open. 
uh, it took me a while to take this out and I was recording and it just took forever and I finally figured out what was wrong. So um, initially when this was still inside and when this was still part of the guitar, um, we weren't able to turn the truss rod not because it was skipping. And obviously I'll show you through the microscope, but it's um, it's all stripped uh, on this side. So, you know, so this is turning inside and we weren't able to push it deep enough. I'll show you that. But there's also uh, an issue here because there seems to be some kind of contamination in the actual threads. And this I can uh, show you clearly through uh, the microscope. You can see that um, whatever this is almost looks maybe like glue. Um, and I think this was just holding the truss rod nut in place and we weren't able to turn it. Uh, yeah, well, it's kind of neat to look inside, see how it's all built. Ow. Oh, um, I want to show you the uh, the actual nut. Now, when I when I say nut, I mean uh, this truss rod nut, right? Not the nut that was here. Um, and once again, if we look through the microscope, we can see how the hex uh, hexagonal shape is completely stripped. It's only stripped to a certain point, right? And like I said, we weren't able to push the hex key inside all the way. So it was just spinning and continuing to strip it. And uh, with more fiddling, I was able to pack this in now that this was finally all open and I was able to see what I was doing. And as you can see, inside there are uh, all these uh, particles, metal particles. And I'm not sure if um, this is supposed to be uh, completely clear. So let's try. Let's try to, to push them through. Yeah. So here, now I'm clearing everything. And yeah, so they're going to fall out the other end, I guess. Okay. So they were blocking access. So I wasn't, we weren't, so the first, uh, the owner was not able to uh, put the hex key all the way in and started turning it and it was stripping all this and it added some metal particles. Um, yeah, and that's about it. Stripped truss rod nut and uh, also what I think is glue uh, contamination inside of the threaded joint between the truss rod and the truss rod nut. Yeah, I know. This video was so captivating that you totally forgot to click that like button. Right? Uh, not to mention subscribe and share. So take a moment and post this video on all the guitar forums that you frequently uh, participate in to help the community. Also, you help the channel because this way I get more viewers and I make more informative videos for the community. Okay, so thank you for that. Uh, also, if you want to help me out a little more, because uh, I often do this at night and I kind of need coffee, you can click the link below that says, buy me a coffee. I will be eternally grateful. There are ways of rescuing a truss rod. Um, 
There are ways of removing a stripped truss rod nut in some cases. Uh, yeah, we can talk about it. Uh, on uh, some fender necks, you will see this walnut plug. So it is possible to remove it. Uh, here we see it from the other side since we've you know dissected this particular one. Uh, so yeah, we can remove this and then we have full access to the nut and we can pull it out and then we need to fix this part. Um, obviously, this was not what the company approved this time. Uh, but we would need to use this tool, um, which is a tapered hex wrench, which I can actually show you through the microscope. You can clearly see. It's, it's a hex Allen key, but it's it's tapered. So if I zoom in, you can probably see this very clearly. And now if we have a stripped uh, nut, it fits into the stripped hole and then you can just wedge it in and then turn it by force and slowly unscrew um, the damaged truss rod nut and then just replace it of course once you replace the nut you still have to fix install a new walnut plug carve it and do cosmetic touch-up work which is time consuming and costly and this is simply not what the company approved in this case in this case, they just said, we are sending you a new neck and you need to cut this headstock off and send us pictures. Um, so it's not my decision. I actually think it's the right decision um, because it all boils down to cost, how much it costs them. And it would cost the company a lot to pay a skilled technician to do all that work, especially the cosmetic touch-up. Like I said, I'm going to take you behind the scenes, so I got something more to show you. Very interesting. Uh, but before I do, uh, well, first let me remind you, you know, to click, click, click. Um, I've done warranty services for Fender, Gibson, and other brands, and I've never had a bad experience with any other people at Fender or Gibson. Uh, they always took care of everything, and customers were always happy, uh, uh, qualifying customers, obviously. Um, yeah, in this case, um, this customer was really happy. Um, so this is a, an Acoustasonic uh, neck, right? And uh, those are not available off the shelf. So Fender said that they would uh, make a new neck within 180 days. So I informed the customer, and then two weeks later, this arrived. So this customer was really happy. And there's another detail about this job. Uh, this customer actually slipped, um, I, I believe by two or three weeks uh, past the warranty period and Fender still took care of him. Okay, just they wanted to make sure the customer is happy. So that's that. Now let's have a look at this. This is a, a PDF. Um, it's the uh, actual PDF that is sent to technicians is called the uh, title FMIC Product Scrapping Guidelines. FMIC stands for Fender Musical Instrument Corporation. Okay. Uh, here you see this is page one of two. Page two deals with amplifiers. So we're not going to get into that. Um, so first here it says uh, caution, right? For your personal safety, always wear safety goggles, blah, blah, blah. But this is where it gets interesting. Uh, it says here, if you are uncomfortable with product scrapping under warranty, contact us. Okay, so they're not trying to be mean. Uh, they understand that some people might not feel comfortable with uh, the idea of scrapping guitars. So they say, you know, just, just let's talk, you know, we can work together. And here um, is the FMIC Technical Support Department contact information. I blurred out the number and the email address for obvious reasons, right? 
Um, and here it says, please feel free to salvage and keep for your future profit and repairs any usable items that remain on the product, such as tuners, spots, pickups, transformers, etc. right? So they're not in the business of scrapping and vandalizing instruments. They understand that uh, there might be salvageable parts on, uh, you know, guitars that need to be scrapped. And there you have it. Uh, we're allowed to keep those parts and, and use them. Uh, so here are some specific guidelines for uh, acoustic stringed instruments. Please saw off the headstock and email a photo or photos showing both the headstock removed and the serial number in view to the FMAC representative you are working with. And here the photos show uh, how to do it. Uh, so you need to show the serial number. Here you can see the headstock has been cut off. Here's the headstock. And here there should be a visible serial number. Now this image is blurred, but uh, you get the idea. Um, the scrapping guidelines for uh, electric string instruments are slightly different. Here it says, please saw off a headstock and the entire body in half, horizontally or in quarters. Okay, and then again, uh, email the photos, etc. As you can see on the bottom, this is uh, for Fender Squire, Gretsch, EVH, Jackson and Charvel, whatever Fender brands, or whatever brands they might own at that time. So that's that. Uh, once again, um, I just wanted to uh, address some concerns that uh, some YouTubers have expressed online. Uh, I feel that sometimes some of our friends on YouTube just jump to conclusions. Somebody found a uh, Gibson Les Paul, um, you know, uh, broken into pieces in a dumpster. And I believe they just, you know, jumped to the wrong conclusions. Uh, so I have no idea what really happened to that guitar, but I would imagine this was probably uh, some kind of a request from Gibson to scrap it um, and dump it, right? Uh, and somebody found it. They made videos on YouTube about that. So I, I just felt that it wasn't fair to the uh, retailer and service uh, provider because I feel that those YouTubers just jumped to the wrong conclusions. So let's, let's just keep that in mind. Okay. So now um, it's time for me to uh, get out of these clothes and slip into my official role of a guitar commissioner, okay? And uh, print out an official guitar autopsy report. I'm back, but this time I am in my official capacity as guitar commissioner for the New York City Department of Guitar Maintenance and Repairs. So here's the official uh, guitar autopsy report. Let's have a look. Guitar autopsy report. Here it says it's a Fender Acoustasonic, blah, blah, blah. And then, uh, well, look at this. Somebody at the department put a coffee mug on top of this official document. Can you believe it? Now, I am going to find out who that was. And when I do, Heads will roll. All right, let's get back to business. Findings. Hex socket on truss rod nut stripped. Truss rod nut seized. That means it wouldn't turn. Unknown substance found on truss rod threads. So since we don't know what the unknown substance was, order lab test. Makes sense. Further investigation required. All right, so let me sign the autopsy report and let me certify it. There you go. Lab tests were ordered and now we know that this unknown substance was in fact glue. And now we know what happened. 
somebody at the factory spilled a little bit of glue onto the threaded portion of the truss rod and installed the truss rod nut. The glue dried and the nut could no longer turn. So at some later time when somebody tried to adjust the truss rod, they couldn't turn it and the Allen key started damaging the internal socket of the truss rod nut. And metal particles clogged up that socket and the Allen key further damaged the truss rod nut, which could no longer be removed because it wouldn't turn. Now, somebody did spill some glue at the factory and this will be further investigated. This is your tax money at work. We will find out who that was. Um, so, thank you very much for watching. There are some links below. Make sure that you visit the official YouTube channel of the uh, New York City Department of Guitar Maintenance and Repairs. The link is below. Subscribe to that. It's mandatory. Um, and there are some other links uh, to help the Guitar Quackery YouTube channel. So make sure you do all that and I'll see you soon.